speak in this corner. On est ensemble pour euh, une petite heure. Now we are going to spend some 45 minutes together. Pour traiter ces questions. And to deal with these issues, to deal with this topic, there are three uh, uh, guests. Two of them, uh, Didier Villepin and uh, uh, Didier Le Pesant, uh, and uh, also uh, Roman Stickleins. However, uh, uh, we, we expected other guests. Uh, and uh, we hoped we were going to be able to give the floor to Widad Bouchamawi, uh, Nobel Prize uh, winner. Uh, we'll see. Uh, she may be joining us uh, uh, towards the end of the session. Um, we uh, were to uh, have a link uh, to Skype with another speaker, but it's not going to... Uh, Happen. Voilà, j'ai fait, euh, j'ai dit à vos abbés les, les noms de nos intervenants. Euh, And uh, en tout cas, merci à eux d'être là. De, de thank you very de, much to your speakers. Uh, anyway, par, uh, let's start with Romain. Uh, Romain uh, donc auteur du coup d'État citoyen. Uh, who wrote uh, uh, le coup d'État citoyen. Alors c'est vrai qu'on on prend, on prend un peu en Would it be possible to get a bit more light in uh, the room? Uh, or maybe dim the lights, uh, the projectors uh, that uh, are glaring at us. Uh, of course, uh, we hope to be able to uh, have time to discuss uh, uh, with you. Now, I'm Romain Sitlin. Uh, we uh, uh, would like to uh, exchange on democracy ouverte and le coup d'état citoyen, this book which has been, uh, which uh, uh, went out today. Now, in, in a nutshell, we wrote this book, uh, The Citizens Coup d'État, uh, because we uh, reacted to the outcome of the uh, uh, European election in 2014 and the abstention rate that was very high. Uh, it was also uh, a first for the uh, National Front. Uh, the Front uh, National uh, uh, Extreme uh, Right Wing Party uh, uh, led. Uh, uh, and uh, all politicians uh, argued uh, that they had uh, um, got the message. Uh, this came as a shock, this uh, uh, landslide victory uh, after the first uh, uh, after the first round of the uh, European elections. Uh, unfortunately, uh, well, uh, this wasn't uh, dealt with, so it's becoming increasingly critical to do something about uh, our democracy. And as citizens, we wondered what we could do. And of course, there are other initiatives uh, that have been taken. But uh, personally, I uh, tried uh, joining uh, political parties, but uh, I couldn't uh, hold on very long. Uh, because uh, it became quite obvious that this wasn't uh, the best way to change things. So we uh, started to look at other possibility to uh, uh, get involved into the uh, uh, debate. And we explored further ways to do so in France and across the world, trying to identify uh, people citizens, associations, organizations, political parties, uh, elected representatives, uh, um, elected uh, government uh, officials uh, who actually uh, uh, stood and stand for um, a civil society's uh, involvement. Now, the starting point, in fact, to our uh, 
un des problèmes, enfin, il y a beaucoup de problèmes, mais un des problèmes de votre book est que l'un des problèmes, problem dans mon avis, opinion, euh, la démocratie the, uh, à euh, l'élection et à l'élection de représentants. Donc c'est vraiment une démocratie qui est réduite à l'élection. C'est le fait que la démocratie est juste boiled euh, down à une uh, série d'élections. Mais on est responsable. Et hein, uh, tous nous sommes uh, responsables pour ça. Uh, 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 mais uh, ça veut dire que nous sommes très passifs. Et puis, from time to time, um, at the time of an election, we are asked about our opinion. In the meantime, we just keep quiet and we are just uh, good, uh, uh, you know, we just uh, go on with our lives. So we thought of uh, ways to be less passive and uh, avoid uh, uh, using uh, the uh, ballot as a, a, a way to uh, uh, chastise politicians. So we uh, decided to look around and we could identify a number of initiatives that we uh, deem interesting that really uh, fed our reflection, and over two years, we uh, visited several countries uh, and several regions in France. Uh, we went to Spain, we went to Brazil, Argentina, and we came to realize that a lot of these initiatives are based on the same observations, the ones I've just been sharing with you, i.e. that we are, uh, the system is coming, uh, is really at the end of its tether, it's really coming to an end. And these initiatives uh, gave us uh, some inspiration for a renewed type of democracy. And trying to be very concrete, I'll give you some examples, and uh, you'll, you'll get another uh, very uh, inter interesting example when ma voix uh, 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 takes the floor. Aujourd'hui, comment ça se passe, c'est les... So what can you do as a citizen to make yourself heard? Well, these days, uh, MPs or uh, Senate members uh, uh, rely on experts to uh, draft bills. Uh, they also, of course, listen to their parties, to their political, uh, uh, they uh, take into account their political manifesto. They also listen very much to lobbyists. So that's a bit of a problem, you see, because uh, then laws are passed and, uh, and are not really uh, um, democratic in the way they are designed. But uh, MPs consider, for the vast majority of them, that uh, they can't you know, know everything. They need experts, and, uh, and they don't have to uh, turn to citizens to get their opinions. And uh, there is a platform uh, which uh, can give the floor to citizens, uh, which makes it possible to cooperate with uh, MPs. And uh, today, uh, MPs can um, draft a bill and, uh, which can be exposed or can be explained on this citizen's platform uh, explaining what uh, the bill would be, uh, why uh, the, the MP thinks it's needed, and then citizens can react to, to that. Uh, and each citizen can then make suggestions um, or suggest new clauses, new provisions in the, in the draft bill, 
uh, in order to improve it. The second stage of this process is to uh, produce an executive summary of uh, uh, all these uh, contributions uh, to uh, identify the uh, main highlights. And the third stage is uh, an online discussion between the MP and uh, some of the contributors that are randomly selected to participate in this debate, but also inviting all citizens uh, to participate in the debate if they so wish. And this makes it possible to uh, get a different uh, perception of a uh, politician and MPs, uh, not as an uh, omniscient uh, uh, representative, but just as another citizen. And this was done for an environmental bill uh, that gave rise to uh, thousands of contributions, and uh, which uh, uh, then uh, was uh, transformed into a law. This is the law on biodiversity. And a citizen uh, was able to spot that uh, uh, the law would forbid uh, local governments to uh, resort to pesticides, but uh, did not prevent it uh, for uh, subcontractors uh, hired by municipalities or local governments. So, and this was thanks to uh, a citizen's contribution. Uh, this loophole was then closed. So you see, uh, these contributions can be very useful, and it's just an example of what can be done with digital platforms. Uh, uh, don't you think this deprive the uh, uh, MPs from their mandate? Uh, uh, or terms of reference. No, not at all. I think uh, this is going to strengthen MPs. And I don't want to dwell too long on that because my uh, neighbor will give you more, uh, a more illustrative example of what can be done then. Uh, because this means MPs uh, uh, go back to the roots. They are, it's really uh, a way for them to reconnect with their uh, voters with their uh, constituencies and uh, uh, n not being uh, seen as a father uh, figure but more as uh, a, a peer and someone with whom you can work. Now this is very interesting uh, because uh, uh, all of us, uh, we agree, uh, all citizens agree around the world that uh, democracy is in danger and that we need to um, uh, start a new era. And uh, we uh, drafted uh, a short text to explain to you uh, why Mavoi can contribute to uh, a new democracy. There's no spokesperson in uh, our organization, and we are just two volunteers, and he's 16, I'm 38. There are two uh, very short questions to you. Who among you uh, are going to vote uh, with pride and uh, enthusiasm at the uh, second round of the presidential election? Just one person apparently in the audience. Second question, who is going to uh, uh, just abstain or uh, just uh, vote in order to block the way to uh, a, 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 a specific candidate? So are we going to become actors uh, or are we going to be uh, really uh, just remain as passive as ever? Because, uh, of course, if we don't do anything, uh, uh, things... Uh, We'll just follow the same course over and over again. Uh, and so if we don't do anything, uh, we'll just get the same rubbish once again. With all the uh, politicians, 
Quelle bande de naze, hein. featuring in all these talk shows, uh, and of course, bah all ouais. of us Mais will grumble and uh, and uh, we will uh, just uh, 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 avoid voting or uh, we will just uh, uh, don't vote at all or don't pick a candidate. Whenever, whatever, anyway, well, all of us will be responsible for the outcome of this election. Uh, I used to be a member of the uh, po of a political party, but I, I think really it's the worst place to learn how to uh, live together, uh, how to feel uh, that we belong to the same community. So it doesn't work. So we would like you to uh, so to, to test uh, or to try something new. Uh, trying to uh, uh, have uh, to give uh, to each and every one of us the uh, capacity to draft laws. In our in our opinion, uh, the, the tragedy of our current democracy is the uh, disappearance of uh, legislative power, and it's a tragedy because when laws are not complied with, uh, well, it's uh, the possibility to. Uh, live together within the same community that uh, becomes impossible. And of course, uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, timing of the uh, uh, parliamentary uh, uh, election and the presidential election, uh, we've reversed the, uh, uh, the order of things and uh, we've made it impossible for democracy to, uh, uh, to uh, be upheld. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, it, ga it gives rise to a lot of negative things, uh, uh, selling uh, uh, drugs that are dangerous, uh, escaping uh, uh, tax, uh, um, and, and so on and so forth. Law is really what makes it possible for all of us to live together and share the same space. And in fact, uh, 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 we just elect MPs, but these uh, MPs can't really uh, do anything uh, about this uh, because they, uh, the, the power is confiscated away from them. So who, who is responsible uh, then for drafting the laws? Well, uh, the lobbies, in, uh, for one, uh, sometimes also the political parties' instructions. Uh, and uh, we are now told that the imperative mandate is not constitutional, uh, uh, but it's uh, not true because uh, we can see that uh, uh, happening every day. And I think law is just about the uh, last ditch defense we have against um, against a, 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 a crumbling of uh, democracy. And, uh, and uh, I think that uh, when it comes to budget, uh, we should be uh, involved uh, as citizens. And, uh, and we uh, should have a right to say, to have a say uh, against all these lobbies uh, uh, in, of petrochemical industry, uh, uh, the armament. Uh, uh, so uh, politicians keep uh, arguing that, well, this is what the French people want or don't want. Well, let's just uh, um, take our um, responsibility and let's say what we really want instead of letting them tell us what we want. So we shouldn't leave them with the, the keys to the house. We should really uh, keep an eye on what they do. Uh, are we uh, going to keep uh, uh, supporting experts uh, or so-called experts who've proven that they are incompetent uh, year, years, uh, in years out? Well, in any case, uh, uh, um, what I find really tragic is that there are so many young people uh, who, uh, and uh, uh, who invent things, uh, who do good things. And uh, I'd like to be uh, uh, proud of myself and uh, uh, in front of my uh, children, uh, for instance, uh, uh, I don't want uh, uh, this uh, law on uh, uh, intelligence uh, to be uh, voted or drones uh, to be used. Uh, I want to be able to uh, tell my children that I voted against it. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I would like, uh, conversely, to uh, have a law in order to track down uh, um, uh, uh, tax havens uh, um, 
and uh, and so on and so forth. You know, uh, I think it is uh, important uh, uh, to uh, be able to say no to certain things, such as pesticides. Uh, so what would you say, you? Uh, I think it's interesting uh, to listen to one another uh, and uh, uh, expert, uh, experts uh, or uh, um, knowledge can be uh, can be accessed very easily on the web. And of course, not all of us are going to vote for every law, but we could vote every every time we think it is important in our eyes. To, uh, in, and we, it would be a way to uh, to to avoid feeling trapped between these two choices. You know, just uh, keep our mouth shut or or uh, or yell. Uh, is it normal for us Alors, citizens to be totally excluded of how dra laws are drafted? Okay, so we don't know how to pass an act or how to read it, uh, but something you can learn. Is there a school for this? Is there any curriculum? No, but you can still learn how to understand the bill. And, uh, and we can uh, contribute um, to going to uh, make any amendments. We can first and learn how to vote a law first. We have to uh, be able to uh, be accountable. We have to make sure that we uh, take a stand, uh, that we make sure that uh, we uh, are critical, that we understand what goes on before we make a decision. Now, when we talk about Mavoie, many people talk about death penalty. Okay, you know, uh, if you had existed back then, then we could have had a death penalty adopted by French citizens. Uh, you know, I think there are two aspects that you know, I think means that I have an opinion, but I am not accountable for the outcome. Whereas I vote or I do means uh, uh, what I do really has an impact uh, on the outcome, and this is truly the difference. And if you want to live together, we have to make decisions together. And in order to do so, we have to sit around the table, we have to have dis discussions, we have to get to know each other, and acts are also passed in order to protect uh, uh, the ones who are weaker than us. Uh, we need to learn how to uh, understand how things are done. We need to understand people, their differences, uh, their strengths and weaknesses. And I think, and Luca and also all the members of Mavoie agree with me, I think that if we act, if we uh, own our own lives, and if we are stakeholders, if we're not passive, if we're active, then we will truly make a difference. And if you are active, you don't see the other as an enemy or as a dominator or as a prey. You see the other as an ally in order to find the right solutions. Well, let's try a few things then, uh, things that haven't been done yet. Uh, there is no country in the world in which uh, parliaments uh, have associated the citizens with lawmaking. And I think this uh, should be done in France. I think it was a good thing it happened in France for the first time, you know, in the country that saw Montesquieu and other great philosophers. Uh, this will change the system because we are the system. So this is the Mavoie project. This is for the uh, le uh, legislative elections in 2017, not the uh, presidential elections. We want citizens to have the possibility to set foot in the National Assembly to take a part in the lawmaking process. We'll want people to be voluntary. Um, and maybe you will accept uh, to receive some training in order to understand what uh, the National Assembly is all about, what Parliament is all about, and uh, how laws are being uh, passed. And once you've been uh, accepted, then you will attend the sessions and you will be part in the lawmaking process. Mavoie is about a democracy, participatory democracy, and people can make contribution based on their own experience and their own knowledge and ideas. Uh, uh, have a role to play. And it's about multiplying expertise. It's about uh, uh, making a decision instead of trying to rule on everyone's lives. And I will contribute, and I hope we will contribute together. And I 
We really do hope that one day uh, there will be many of us. We will be gaining a few seats. The purpose is not to replace MPs, but is to work together with them. If you want to have one of those seats, you have to accept that uh, there will be a drawing process. A draw process. So you're going to accept to vote on the bills. And the voting platform will uh, give you a vote based on the majority of votes. And the Mavois MPs uh, will have a definite role to play. You will be uh, there, will be attending all the sessions, then your uh, remuneration will depend on a uh, participatory decision that have been made. And for all of us, uh, and I don't want to be an MP three or four times per week, we want to make a contribution only, then we we'll have to uh, uh, win vote so in June next year. In order to do so, we have to have a campaign just so we have to fund this. This will cost monthly 4,000 euros uh, and uh, small streams end up in large rivers. And we did this in Strasbourg last year. We got posters, they yellow with a mirror. We uh, can see ourselves in the mirror. We see that we are uh, accountable for what happens. So it's uh, also uh, word of mouth, we, we don't uh, interact with the media, there are interviews, we uh, act uh, using the social networks, we need uh, funding, and obviously we are independent uh, and we do not belong to any political party. So it's about experimenting, trying, learning, and we are hoping to really get to the point. I'm sure that there are many issues that would be dealt with if uh, uh, people uh, stopped uh, uh, only thinking along the lines of the main political parties. I'm sure we would have solved the issue of tax evasion, for example, because nobody in France uh, uh, things uh, that uh, tax havens are good things for the country. And uh, it really is about uh, bringing people together instead of stigmatizing people. And Luca, I really would like you to be the first generation who would be associated uh, with uh, our future. Uh, and before we uh, welcome a uh, uh, who's just joined us, I'm going to ask you one or two questions. So, isn't there a danger, you know, the danger of a less democracy? Don't you think that it's that of a promise is the fact that uh, politicians make promises? Maybe we should uh, maybe have a contract or something different. And Kitri, when we ask people for their opinion, well, it's not, I mean, we don't only have a uh, urban uh, people, people live in big cities, or educated people, and uh, if uh, citizens uh, were to vote uh, for or against death penalty, we know that they would vote for the death penalty. And we all know that when there is a referendum or, or when there are such a major votes, uh, sometimes the outcomes are quite uh, striking and uh, disturbing. So I don't think there is a risk if everyone you know, takes part in the vote. I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, we, don't you think that uh, there is a risk now if everyone uh, uh, has a word to say that it's really the majority that wins? We know that there is a real risk with regards to death penalty. Don't you think that the risk is what we, uh, the situation that we're seeing today? You know, when we are faced with a situation, we always have to uh, to think about the ideal solution, but it's a try and error process. We need to try things out. Now, if, let's imagine that we have uh, 5, 10, or 15 MPs. If there are 50, uh, if you have 50 bills uh, per year, uh, you know, this would give us 50 opportunities per year to try and experiment. Uh, and I don't think this uh, would uh, put our democracy in danger. Uh, I, mean, I mean, this is the true difference. You know, I am deciding. I'm the decision maker. Obviously, citizens are quite uh, remote from politics, but I we do understand why they feel so remote. The main difference is uh, to empower people and to make them the decision makers, because it's very different, though, whether you uh, only say what you think 
or uh, whether you actually truly have to make a decision and to act. Now, if you, for example, the Intelligence Act, uh, I did exercise, you know myself, if you have to make a decision and uh, you know that the decision will uh, change things, then you reconsider things and you, uh, this is an opportunity to really reconnect uh, to uh, to the lawmaking process. Well, I, I fully agree with you. I think that uh, uh, democracy is about a, uh, deliberation, is about making decisions, but uh, an informed decision. Now, we have a viewpoint in the beginning, and this could be the uh, majority viewpoint. I mean, we'll have our own uh, viewpoints, but, uh, for example, people might say that they want a death penalty to uh, be um, reenacted, but then you have a discussion, and once you're really the one who has to make a decision, then you might change the way you do things or you see things. And in this case, the citizen, instead of being passive and being only a consumer, with Mavoie, then citizens would become stakeholders, they would become actors, and this truly changes everything. And I'm sure that this would really have an impact on the decision-making process. Uh, would it, do you agree with this? I know you arrived a bit late, but uh, well, I, I agree. Well, I'll say what I think, but first I'd like to apologize. Uh, I, uh, I just, uh, I was in Paris. I, took part in the event for Tunisia. I'm an MP in uh, Tunisia. I'm a member of the Quartet, who was awarded the Peace Nobel Prize. There are four organizations, uh, civil society organizations, uh, workers' organizations, employees' organizations, law organizations, uh, and a fourth organization. So what role did we play in Tunisia, and um, what is the path that we followed? Well, you know that uh, there was the Arab Spring, on 2011, 14th of January in Tunisia. And this was thanks to young Tunisian people. There was no political leader, really, no one. It's just young Tunisians who had gone out on the street. Uh, they just said they were against the dictature, dictatorship and they wanted democracy. So there are three elements. So people were looking for freedom, democracy, and obviously, uh, uh, there was a very strong imbalance among the regions, and people wanted jobs. And those three things are, uh, really are the uh, things that uh, moved people, and that's the reason why they went out on the streets and all day to demonstrate. And it's just something that was truly unique in Tunisia because there was no leader, there was no political party involved. It was really citizens, the Tunisian people. So then uh, we had this uh, uh, democracy that uh, was uh, coming about, uh, well, in the beginning, just like in any revolution, uh, there were some death uh, because uh, there were uh, obviously some upheaval. But uh, compared with other revolutions, I must say that uh, it was less aggressive than in other uh, parts of the world. But now we have a, a strong basis for democracy, the freedom of speech, uh, we have free elections, democratic elections, uh, and we had the true privilege because we get to uh, travel a lot and, uh, we, and people had uh, great expectations and uh, there were some uh, uh, elections uh, that uh, uh, were going to take place, and and and, and no, before the revolution, uh, uh, we didn't know what it meant to uh, wait for the outcomes of an election process. Uh, and you know, the Tunisian society is uh, truly emancipated. It is extremely active and present. I think that two out of four uh, Tunisian citizens are truly involved, and this is truly what made a difference. And women also definitely played a huge role, uh, educating people, uh, and uh, which is probably different from what happens in other countries in the region. So we had those free elections, uh, and the Constituent Assembly uh, was a, 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 is the one that actually drafted the first uh, Tunisian constitution. So there were different parties 
that were involved, uh, but first and foremost, uh, it was the civil society that really played the major role. We also had a uh, political uh, parties, now people call them Islamist parties. Uh, I don't like this uh, definition, and they tried to change the constitution, they wanted to change the role of women, but men went on the streets, so women also, and they said no. And this was truly extraordinary. It was an extraordinary process in order to make sure that this Tunisian model would succeed. But then there were the uh, political uh, terror attacks in 2013, and this had uh, never happened before in the country. Um, there had never been such a terror attacks. And uh, this was really a symbol. Shuri uh, Belaid, a political leader, was assassinated. And a few months later, there was this uh, uh, attack, assassination of a uh, MP, Mohad Balami. And uh, people were really afraid. And people thought that uh, Tunisia uh, would uh, really uh, see this uh, as a, a drawback that we would lose our, our freedoms and uh, that things uh, would move the wrong way. And this is when we thought that we had to do something. This is the first time that uh, uh, employee and employees' representatives decided to sit together around and to talk to one another. We had to have this dialogue. We had to have those uh, uh, discussions, negotiations, in order to have a national dialogue. And it's thanks to this uh, national dialogue to the Quartet that we were able to save the country. And uh, we did this now night and day on the weekends. It took six months. Uh, and we were able to have uh, all sorts of people sit around the table, uh, political leaders uh, who wouldn't have spoken to each other uh, uh, before that. So there were lots of uh, back and forth uh, negotiations uh, and discussions uh, in order to have people change their minds and accept to talk to one another. And together, uh, we had a uh, uh, discussions, uh, in-depth discussions about the future of Tunisia. We drafted this road map, map sorry, and uh, we made sure that the political parties uh, signed uh, the road map. Well, two or three uh, smaller political parties uh, uh, didn't sign the road map, but the major uh, political parties did sign it. And I think that the you know, this, uh, national dialogue you know, took uh, approximately six months, but they, there was sent any vote. It was really about uh, consensus. Uh, no, consensus is a, the, was the only way uh, to come to a common solution. And so we had the roadmap. We decided to uh, replace the government with a new government. We drafted uh, a new constitution. And we set the date uh, for the uh, elections. And then there was the uh, election process. So this is how we did this at the time. Back then, it was a, a, a difficult a challenge. I, it was a tiresome. It was difficult, and but this was successful thanks to the uh, participation of civil society. So things uh, remain fragile. We have a, a, a security uh, problem. We're not responsible for what happens in Tunisia. We, I mean, this is essentially due to what happens in Libya. Tunisia uh, uh, isn't responsible for what happens in Libya. You're all aware that there was uh, this Western uh, intervention. Uh, Gaddafi uh, left the country, but then the people in the country were left alone. And we in Tunisia were the only ones to suffer from this. And during the transition period, we uh, welcomed 1.3 million Libyans. And we never said that they were not welcome. We welcomed that we opened our doors. And even poor people, very poor people who are still poor, they have this uh, very big heart and they welcomed uh, those refugees. Right now, there are 300,000 Libyans who live in the country on a permanent basis, and approximately 1 million people who move back and forth. And as you know, Tunisia is not a rich country, but we have a very big heart. So what I'm trying to say is that our democracy is just in the 
uh, initial phase. It's, it's a new, a young democracy, but we're here to defend our rights. We're here to defend uh, universal rights, uh, human rights. We're here to uh, defend uh, human beings regardless of their uh, gender, of their uh, religion. So we are an open country, we are a peaceful country, and we are a tolerant country. And I'd like to give you my personal opinion uh, no, for those who commit uh, unacceptable crimes. Uh, I think, I mean, um, I think that everyone should be uh, dealt with the same. And I think that if uh, a child is being raped or if things are unimaginable are being done, I think that the punishment should be uh, in line with the crime. I mean, that is my personal opinion. So, uh, I mean, just Tunisia is a uh, new democracy. Uh, how do you uh, consider other democracies? For example, when you look at the, the French democracy, do you think that uh, there are things that uh, caveats that you want to avoid, or do you think that uh, people complain about things that they shouldn't be complaining about because they're just so lucky? Well, you know, uh, Tunisia is a former French colony, so we inherited many things from France, the good things, uh, uh, not things that uh, were not so good but uh, we've been independent since uh, 1956 uh, and I think that uh, we've been mature enough to go uh, along our own path. In Tunisia, uh, there is a, I mean, uh, I mean, there's a political uh, pluralism in France but also in Tunisia. Uh, I think that uh, uh, women are as emancipated in Tunisia as they are in France, so there are a few things that we got even before French women did. So democracy, uh, freedom, I mean, this discussion is all very well, but we also, what happened with the labor law, uh, I think that uh, things should have been done uh, based on a dialogue after a discussion. You can't impose things on people, uh, because what happens then, you know, uh, people are unhappy. I think you have to listen to people. You have to have a discussion. This is the best way to go. Unfortunately, I arrived late, but in Tunisia, we also have an assembly for young people uh, and uh, younger people and not so young people are very much involved. The civil society in Tunisia is extremely involved. It's, this, it's uh, really the way to go to have this exchange with the uh, young citizens uh, and we'll try to uh, educate uh, people uh, very early on so that they know how to defend uh, their interest and how to be good citizens and this there's a lot to do and it will be very honored to welcome you and to listen to your experience and to have a discussion with the Tunisian people. Well, we were lucky to meet with the uh, Tunisian women uh, this summer, uh, women who uh, work with the uh, political parties. Uh, it was my first encounter with uh, such women and we heard a lot about the Arab Spring and the Tunisian Revolution and I think this uh, was a tipping point. It, uh, uh, there are the uh, movements uh, in Mexico, in Germany, in other countries, but I think that uh, what happened in Tunisia really uh, was a uh, tipping point, and I think that this uh, uh, experience uh, was uh, really a magnificent experience, uh, and I think that they uh, uh, better than us, no, uh, as far as a more advanced than we are, as far as a parity or gender equality is concerned. For example, when there is a, an election, you know, the, there has to be one man, one woman, one man, one woman on the uh, list of uh, candidates. Uh, uh, obviously, this uh, doesn't uh, provide uh, immediate answers to uh, major problems such as uh, unemployment, uh, hunger, etc. But at least people uh, uh, work together and in hand, and they've all uh, wanted uh, this change, and they all feel accountable for the outcomes. So there is a form of solidarity here, and people. Uh, believe that it's up to them. They're the ones are going to change things. Uh, and I'll be very happy to go back to Tunisia. Well, thank you very much. No, there is a new uh, electoral uh, law, and there will be a horizontal and vertical gender parity in. Uh, 
our local governments. We have almost 34% almost women in our uh, parliament, and we also have a very young MP, 41 years old. So we're also moving in order to uh, have more young people represented or elected. So could, maybe we could say that without Facebook, the revolution would have never taken place. Uh, so what about social networks? So don't you think that it's a bit like uh, are the jobs are worldwide? Don't you think that it's the uh, digitalization of politics that uh, is changing things that is now taking power? A few words. First, uh, there are many things that they are linked or associated with uh, uh, Facebook or uh, digital tools. So people try to avoid Facebook. They try to work on open source software, uh, platforms that are much more horizontal and more independent and more transparent. So that's the first thing. So digital now is a big word. No, they are no, but we should have a close look. And um, I mean, obviously, Facebook uh, is not all negative. But there's one issue. There is a book by Rosa who says that in order to uh, solve everything, click here. Uh, we should be aware, be aware of any uh, too technological no solution. No technology cannot solve everything. And I think that Mavoir uh, really uh, is aware of this. We have to uh, choose the tool carefully because many initiatives uh, offer great platforms, uh, great tools uh, so that citizens uh, can be involved. But uh, most of the times, uh, people don't choose the platforms or those tools because they haven't been designed properly. So you need to really think carefully before you uh, design the tools so that you have the right tools in place. C'est sûr que ce type de d'initiative ne pourrait pas exister dans l'ancien monde. This sort of initiative uh, couldn't have uh, uh, existed in uh, the former non-digital world. And uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, everything we uh, uh, we did uh, uh, was uh, started with a very short film that uh, uh, someone uh, posted on Facebook. Uh, and then gradually, more and more people uh, watched it. And uh, word of mouth uh, made it possible for other people to join. So I think that uh, uh, the, the uh, people can uh, then get involved. And uh, we also have access to the false power, which is uh, uh, the media, and to circulate information. Uh, social media are the best tools, but of course, uh, we have to be careful. In Mavoir, uh, we have a platform uh, developed with hackers and developers. We try to base everything uh, on open source so that the code is open and everybody can contribute. So uh, what is important is uh, to avoid buying uh, files, uh, big data. So we want to develop a platform based on open source so that it becomes a common good. So we um, uh, use a, a platform called Democracy OS uh, developed in Argentina. We are testing their tool and we're going to improve it. And uh, so Democracy OS uh, uh, contributed to the uh, common uh, good and uh, the common portfolio, and uh, we are sharing uh, all this. And there are lots, lots of uh, associations uh, that uh, teach people and train people and coach people on how to participate in, uh, in society. And, and so I uh, keep talking to people in other countries so we can share what we learn, and we can also share 
uh, our failures uh, and uh, share on our failures so as to uh, uh, avoid uh, or uh, help others avoid the same mistakes, making the same mistakes. So, well, I don't know, it may not work in the end, but at least uh, all of us will have contributed to this. Yes, I think uh, uh, social media uh, enabled Tun uh, Tunisians to uh, uh, exchange information and pass on information as quickly as possible. And so I think that Facebook indeed and the social media contributed a lot to the uh, revolution in Tunisia. Uh, there are only a few minutes left. And uh, 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 the uh, audience will be able to uh, put questions to you uh, at mid the speaker's uh, uh, session. Uh, I just have one single question, the same one to all of you. How far do we have to go to uh, defend young uh, future generations' uh, rights? So how far should we go? Well, I think we should go where we uh, have a chance to explore every avenue. Now we can listen to very uh, young people uh, who are just brimming with ideas. Uh, we've got uh, this, uh, uh, we, we have no choice at all. We are all together in this and uh, it's very important to listen to one another and to exchange our views and, uh, and uh, of course we're going to fight hard just to uh, defend our, our, our rights and uh, there are lots of things to, uh, to be done in Tunisia but we are on the right track in terms of uh, human rights and, uh, and freedom. Uh, we just have to uh, entice uh, young people to be more uh, creative, to be more proactive, to become uh, entrepreneurs and this requires a bit more work. It's not going to be easy, but uh, I think uh, we've got the means and ways to convince uh, young people to, uh, uh, to learn how to rely on themselves and uh, become entrepreneurs. Well, maybe it's not the question that I find the most inspiring. Uh, how far should we go? Well, uh, I think this is a tipping point, you see, and uh, uh, we are at a crossroad but because, uh, you know, the old world is disappearing and a new world uh, is emerging uh, as far as democracy goes. So how far should we go? Well, uh, listening to uh, uh, my neighbors, to people from Mavois, uh, I think experimenting and uh, and experience uh, is uh, shouldn't uh, be uh, bound uh, by limits because there are many things we, sh we still have to invent in order to put citizens uh, back at the heart of the uh, democratic process. Hmm. But of course, nothing is uh, cast in concrete, and democracy uh, is avert to uh, casting things in concrete anyway. Uh, Lucas, so your feeling is just to get rid of all our uh, current politicians. Well, I think there are two points which are very important uh, for uh, all of us, including uh, future generations. Uh, first, it, it is to realize that you can become actors, uh, you can uh, change things for yourselves. And uh, secondly, that people uh, talk to one another and, uh, and uh, stop fighting and quarreling and, uh, and manage to uh, have a real actual dialogue. No, I don't have anything to say after Luca. How far should we go? Well, I think uh, uh, we have to look into ourselves and uh, and uh, really try to uh, to think uh, ahead and uh, and realize that everything we do, everything we say, can have an impact on the world. So maybe less compromise and uh, and more. Uh, more of uh, uh, 
choosing uh, our fate and be able to go to the ballot uh, uh, station with a, a real uh, possibility to vote for someone uh, and being proud of having done it. So just respecting ourselves whenever we uh, vote for a politician and uh, or watch TV or do whatever we do in uh, uh, our society. Thank you very much. Right, so you can meet them uh, and ask uh, uh, questions uh, during the uh, meet the speakers uh, session.